everyone, it's Robin, R.S. Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you the crafty goodness that I've been working on this week. I finished up the Wonky Stars. It's been quilted. It has a rainbow binding on it, which was super simple because I just used the rainbow backing fabric. I thought this would be really fun because of the rainbow colored stars on the front. There's so many different colors that this fabric worked out really well for it. And instead of making a scrappy binding, I could just have all of these little bits of color, and I thought that matched up really nice with all of the different colors in the stars. This is listed in my Etsy shop, so if anyone's interested in checking it out, the link is down below in the description box. I finished the scissors and spool quilt a while ago. I went double checked back on the previous Whip It Wednesdays and I didn't see that I actually showed it to you. If I did, my apologies. You guys know sometimes I repeat things just because it's been a bit and I can't seem to find it in the videos and overlook it or something. But here is the spool quilt. This one is going to be an option for the 50,000 subscribers. Once we hit 50,000 subscribers, the winner will be able to choose from the spool quilt or the flamingo quilt. I thought not everyone liked flamingos or might not want a flamingo quilt, especially how large it is. So I thought this would be great for someone's sewing room. They are on my list to make more. I just need to find that extra two hours in a day or 10 hours in a week just to get things done. So for this one, I used the striped fabric in the block. You've seen the basic quilt before. I'm pretty sure I showed you the flimsy. And a flimsy for you guys that aren't quilters, that just means it's the quilt top that hasn't been quilted and had the binding put on it. So I used a red and white striped alternating a little bit of a wider and a bunch of narrow strips just for the center. When I make some more, I want to put some flower fabrics in it or something like that. I want to change it up just a little bit and have something fun in there, novelty or something versus just the thread for the spool. Black scissors because it always looks great with red, white background. I just have the little wavy stitches on it and then I used this a pinkish red fabric on the back because so, it matches the front you can see the lines going on it that's not actually quilting that's just the way the design of the fabric goes but doesn't it look like my diagonal quilting and then of course i have to have the striped fabric that works well for a binding so this fabric is already made like that you can either just cut it straight a grain or on a diagonal i believe this one i just cut straight and then it just makes a great binding. I love to pick up a couple of yards of this anytime I'm at the store and I see it and any color that I can possibly find. So far, I think I just have red and possibly yellow, but this is a really great fun fabric to keep on hand for bindings. After the winner decides which one they're going to choose, depending on what they choose, I will probably put the other quilt into the shop to give everyone else an opportunity if they don't win, if they'd like to purchase it. I still have my pile of goodies here from the live stream. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I'm actually going to turn these into zipper pouches and make a tutorial out of it. And I think it's going to be this Friday's video. I thought it might be nice for you guys to see the finished project. This is when we were taking chunks of fabric and we were using the Dresden ruler or just a random diagonal wedge cuts to see if we can replicate the, I call it like the honeybee pouch because it's black and yellow, but it actually has, I think it's got flowers and stuff on it. But this is the one that we made with the actual Dresden. I have some leftover bits. And this is the one where we just created our own wedge. I'm going to show you how to sew this into a pouch by taking this one fabric and quilting it. And then we will sew it up into a long zipper pouch for pens and pencils, crochet hooks, double pointed needles and stuff like that. It's something I needed to figure out and learn on my own also because I didn't know how to take one solid piece of fabric and turn it into a zipper pouch with the lining and the zipper across the top. So I'm going to show you how to do that on Friday's video. We'll do the same thing with this one. I just like how it's fun on one side, a lot of purple, and then when you flip it over you could also just showcase the more flowered fabric. You could turn it this way 
and have your wedges going that way. We might try that one just to have something different because that gives us a nice size zipper pouch right there. So look for that video come up either this Friday or sometime in April, but I'm thinking this Friday. Previously, I showed you a big chunk of just random scraps of little thin strips of fabric that I put onto some fusible interfacing. I went ahead and I cut them all out and I'm making my scrappy cards out of them. I have a nice, good size stack of these. They're all quilted or stitched down to the interfacing and stitched together because they weren't sewn. And then I added them onto my cardstock. So they're all ready to be turned into their little note cards. I think I only have a couple note cards left, so it was definitely time for this. Now I just pulled this out of my little stack I have on the side. When I was preparing for the live stream, I did play with a couple little wedges just to see how it would look with the little Dresden ruler and stuff like that, so I just made this little mug rug. So even when you're practicing with something, you can just take it and turn it into a mug rug, cut it in half, make some coasters, make a hot pad out of it. There's always something you can make with your practice pieces. And just some fun stitching on the back. The last Friday tutorial, I showed you guys how to use your charm squares and to make a bunting out of it, or you can use any size square. So here is mine. This is going to end up in the shop eventually. I do not believe I have it in there yet. I need to go ahead and get some good pictures of it. I haven't decided how I'm going to do the pictures yet. I think just letting them spiral here is great. I don't really have a place that is Etsy perfect or perfect for Etsy photos because they like to have a nice blank background. So I don't really have a spot to showcase it on how nice it would look hanging up somewhere. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay it out flat. If you guys are interested in it, just let me know. I'll get it listed sooner rather than later. But you know what a bunting is and you see the actual look of it just in a regular photo with the polka dots so for now that's going to have to be the best option for me i think this is my favorite project of the week the scrappy carrots either a little table topper or a little small wall hanging i altered a pattern that i purchased i believe it was from so sewing times i have to put it right here what the etsy shop name is but they had it to where they had two carrots, one right side up and the other one upside down, and they were just big chunks of fabric. And I wanted to see what it would look like more like a crumb quilt, a little scrappiness like that. And I also had these left over from something else that I was playing with, a project that didn't quite work out, but I got to use up a lot of my orange scraps. And that led me to this project. This little yellow border, I think it really helps everything pop out and it frames it nicely. It gives it almost that farmhouse feel with the gingham plaid checkered type fabric that you see a lot on, on tablecloths and napkins and things like that. And I use that on the back and you might be able to see the quilting. I use the sewing machine wave stitch versus just taking the fabric and steering it like that and creating my own design. I used a, a yellow thread, a nice pale yellow thread to help pull it all out. I just love yellow and orange together. It works so nicely and you can find that in the shop. I think this is another project that I need to make for myself because this would be great because you can use it for Easter, of course, because the relationship with carrots and rabbits, bunnies and Easter or just as a springtime and it would take you in through summertime, especially with the nice bright colors. So you can leave this hanging up or on a table for quite a while. Now mine have to go on the wall. I cannot put them on a table because if my cats even think there's a quilt laying somewhere, they're going to take a nap on it. I get questions every now and then about how I hang up my mini quilts on the wall and it's been changing over the years. I used to put pins in it, then I was using those metal binder clips with a thumbtack and hanging it up that way. And now I use this Loctite Fun Tack. It's for paper, wood, tile, linoleum, cinder block, brick, metal, and plastic. And what it is is you put these little tabs on the back and each of these tabs can hold one pound. So I take two of them and I split them each in half and I put them in the four corners. And I find that it holds it up really well on my painted drywall walls, just your basic walls. 
I've had little mug rugs and quilts this size that have been up on the wall for a year or more with it now, and it works out fine. I've seen these at my little neighborhood Walmart over in the pens and pencil school supply section, but I picked mine up on Amazon, and I noticed the prices are about the same either way. I worry a little bit about it possibly drying out, so I just pop it into here. Little quart size Ziploc bag. And then I store it out of the sunlight in a desk drawer. As I mentioned, I've been using this for over a year and I've been using the same package, so it's been holding up really well it's being stored like this. I would test first, maybe on the back side of a closet or something to make sure that that blue putty isn't gonna pull any paint off or leave a stain behind. I wasn't worried about my walls here. When I first started using it, I checked and I didn't see anything on the wall and I didn't see any stains on the back of my quilts. These are just for me and they're just fun quilts, so I'm not too worried about it, but you can always check and see if maybe there's a blue tack stuff. You don't have to use the same brand that I have, of course. There are a variety of different tacking things that hang up posters and such. But it's a great way to easily take them down, put them up, change them up every month so I'm not putting holes in my wall. I did use the command strips for a while the variety of ones whether they had the velcro on it or you just had the stick and then you know you pull a little tab and it pops off and those work great but they can be quite costly after a while when if you want to put up 15 or 20 quilts or take it down every month you're having to replace those command strips every month so that's why I went for something that was a little less expensive and that would last me a lot longer this is one of the recent projects that I worked on with my patrons. Just some um, half square triangles turned into pinwheels in the center. This was just a quick fun project for a mini quilt for us, but I also wanted to see if I could play with color a little bit. I've used up a lot of like my favorite fabrics, you know, the ones that you always go to first, and now I'm just playing with different things. We used a different technique for making the half square triangles, so I needed fabric that was larger than a charm square, so I had to go into the fat quarter section of my stash and this is what I came up with. I had chosen the oranges first so I have these three different oranges and then I went ahead and googled what goes good with orange or what went good with orange and gray and Google told me that a lot of the designers are using a bit of aqua so they're putting either aqua accent pillows or they're using an aqua wall painting and stuff and then they're decorating with the oranges and the grays and stuff and I was a little hesitant but I actually like the way this looked. This doesn't make me go, oh my goodness, I love it. But you know what? It works well together. This fabric I really love. I'm all out of this now, but this is my absolute favorite out of here. So everything worked out really well together. I added something to the project. I added a bit of a flange here. I like to have that little pop of color versus a actual mini skinny border. I thought that helps give that little bit of a frame look to it. And then I finished it off. I ended up matching my binding and my flange together. It wasn't my first choice. I wanted this fabric for the binding, but as I used it all up, except for a couple of smaller pieces, it just wasn't enough to frame it because I liked the way it looked when it was just kind of floating off of the quilt and then the aquas and the flange and stuff really popped. But this looks really great together also listed in my shop of course i don't make too many things for myself i only have so much room so i like to have fun of making the project and then i pop it in the etsy shop so if anyone else wants to enjoy it nice deep yellow backing fabric again i like the yellows with the oranges it's on the back i don't always match my back or coordinate it but it is nice when you can do it while well, being so totally unorganized, I forgot to show you the things that I saved from this project. I did make some scrappy half square triangles from cutting off of the big pieces here. So I have a bunch of those. I now have a little collection of scrappy ones with a solid background there on it for my half square triangle. So I'm going to create a little basket for these so I can collect these over time and if I have just ones with the solid fabrics or maybe some rainbow stripes or something I think it'd be really fun to make an entire quilt out of it just maybe a little wall hanging table runner or a pillow would be fun if I had either all the same colors or something that would kind of fade or the the rainbow or just some fun so I'm going to start saving these in a separate little basket 
because I really enjoy doing projects like this and I collect these a lot now. I also made a flamingo drawstring pouch. I purchased a new pattern from me and Ma Designs on Etsy. So I used some of my fun flamingo fabric and this green batik just works so nicely with it. I wanted to get this pattern, not because I needed to learn how to make a drawstring bag. I have made enough of them. I have actually purchased several patterns for them, plus some free ones. But I've been seeing this one-sided handle a lot lately, and I just wanted to see the technique that everyone's using to do it, or at least someone's using. I could figure it out, of course, but I wanted to see how others were doing it and to get their tips and tricks. So it has this nice little handle. Normally with my drawstring bags, I don't put a handle on it. I added these little stoppers, the little drawstring stoppers, just to bring in more of that green color. And what's fun about this bag, not just the handle, but it has these pockets inside. Normally when I make pockets and they go straight across, it, it doesn't always sit as nice as this. Sometimes it's just different things, and by following this pattern, I really like how the pocket sits directly onto the bottom. So right down here, the pocket is at the bottom of the bag. It sits really nicely where I box the corners, so it's nice and even. You have a good size pocket there, and then you have these two smaller ones. I think this was designed for like a knitting bag or a crochet bag, but you could easily use this for anything because, hey, it's got a handle on it too. I have no problem taking this with me, going out flea marketing to the farmer's market, to grocery shopping, wherever. You could put a bunch of things in there. This comes in, I believe it had four sizes. This one is the biggie. And there's even a larger one, but then there's two more smaller sizes. So I want to make one of each just to see the different sizes and maybe have them all lined up. I think that would be fun to see how they progress in size. This is a really good size. You can easily put a sock project in there, a small shawl, the beginning of a sweater. You probably wouldn't be able to put the whole sweater in there, of course, a hat project. Plenty of room for your wallet, a larger wallet, hairbrushes. Maybe you want a small diaper bag for quick trips to the store and you don't need to have everything. So I thought this was really fun. I use very sturdy nylon cording here for this. I'm always trying to find the cording that's going to work for me. I'm trying to find my cording that I enjoy using. But for now, I have a bunch of this from when I did the mushroom drawstring houses, pouch houses, and it's on hand. So let's go ahead and use it. It works. So if you're interested in a flamingo drawstring bag, it's also in the shop. I did use batting for this, so it is quilted. So everything has got batting. The top part has some straight line quilting just to add a little bit of texture to it and to make sure everybody stays all nice and secure together. You can leave the lockers down at the bottom or you can lock them up. I think I want to try and make a couple of drawstring pouches where you only use one drawstring and then you close it up and you use the little locking thing here to lock it tight. I received a fun postcard. This one didn't come directly in the mail on its own. It came in a package, but I thought this was fun because you can look at it however shape you want, whether it's, is that a parallelogram? All my math people will let me know, but it just reminds me of a kite. So I thought that was really fun. It's got what I call the heartbeat stitching on there see it nicely on the back. So I thought that was a really fun version of a fabric postcard because not all of them have to be a rectangle. I also received this beautiful, isn't this amazing, needle book. This is a Sue Spargo design. There is beads and the bird and the flowers. This is felt. Everything is hand stitched down. Pretty sure this is wool felt. And then over here on the back, it's got a little bit of a pocket, the elastic and button closure, and when you open it up, it's a trifold version. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? So you have some pockets over here, so you have little ones to put your pens and scissors or whatnot in, and then you have your felt. You've got extra birds and butterflies, flowers. You can put some of your pins in there. 
Then you have this little quick spot on the inside here with the little flower shape. So you can either open it up for everything or if you just need to have something here. Now for something like this, as I'm working with a project, I would probably use this as a pin cushion. So as I'm sewing and when I stop to take the needle out, if I'm doing embroidery or something and I need to change it, I would pop my pin in there just so I don't lose it because I don't necessarily lose my pins, but I sure do misplace them a lot when I'm sitting here sewing. I find it really hard to see a pin when it's sitting here on top of this cutting board. So I like to have somewhere to stick it, like a pin cushion, of course, but I don't always have a pin cushion available, so I just tend to either stick it in my little sewing machine mat or I pop it into the needle case that I'm using. Now this needle case is worthy of display. You don't even have to use it. Close this guy up and you can just sit this out and have it somewhere and look at it. It is so pretty. I love that green wool on the back there, that mottled look. It just makes everything just kind of blend all together and look nice. Isn't that pretty? So thank you guys so much for sending me the packages with these lovely gifts inside. So your scrappy word for today will be needle. I want to know, do you collect pin cushions? Do you use pin cushions? I do actually store a lot of my pins and pin cushions. These are actually pin cushions that were made for me. I have another one that's over there on a the shelf that I'm not going to pull out, but I keep these inside the desk drawer. Again, for you guys that haven't been here for a while, I have a cat, Miss Mocha. She's a white calico, and she just likes to come and she takes her little teeth and she likes to pull all the pins out. So I don't want her to accidentally swallow one or for them to be around the house where the cat or myself are going to step on them so I keep these in a desk drawer. The pin cushion up on the shelf is actually kept in an old ice cream container so that it has a nice good secure lid again so the cats don't get to them. I do have needle books that I use. I won this one on a blog giveaway many many years ago back in the early 2000s. It has a spot for your scissors. You can put your thimble in there and then it has a little spot for your needles. I love this one. I've been using it for years and years. And then I've made my own, so I have a variety of needles in here. I never know which one I want for sewing, and I use them for different things. And then for this one, I am also made this one. I love the fabric, so I kept it for myself. These are the self-threading needles. There is a slot on the side of it. You will never be able to see it in a video, but right here, there's a gold tip on it, and right on the outside edge right here, I can put the thread in and it goes in. I bought two kinds of self-threading needles. I bought this kind that has it on the side, and I also bought the kind that it goes down on the top of the needle, and I didn't like that because it would shred my thread as I was trying to put it in. Now, it could have just been the ones that I purchased, but I purchased both kinds to see which one I liked, and I like this one better, so I just go ahead and use that version. Here are the ones that have it on the top. They come in this little test tube, which I, I really kind of think is cute. But again, impossible to see, but there's a little groove right here at the top and you just hold your thread and you pull it down across the top and it goes right in. And then there's also the eye of the needle underneath it so you could thread it like a regular needle. I've used these in the past and I can't put the lid on. I've used these in the past and I've enjoyed them. So it might just be this brand. There's some shorter gold ones and taller silver tipped ones and stuff. But again, since I have both of them already in my house, I just use the ones that I like. So that's it for me this week. I hope you guys have had a nice week. I know there's been crazy weather all across the country. I hope everyone is safe and that everyone is staying as healthy as they possibly can as we're transitioning from the winter into the spring, summertime, if some of you guys will ever stop getting snow, that is. So thanks so much for hanging out with me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!